Welcome to Section 9, Application Protocol Analysis 2. In this section, we're going to take a look at some email analysis, including POP and SMTP, some 802.11 or wireless Wi-Fi analysis, and some VoIP analysis for voice over IP, telephony, as well as being able to play back the captured traffic in a VoIP capture to be able to hear the issues that may be occurring in it. Welcome to video 9.1 email analysis. In this video we're going to take a look at what POP and SMTP are used for as well as investigating the communications in POP and SMTP and what some of the codes are whether they're successful or error codes or something like that. Now we have three main protocols that we use for email on the internet. We have the post office protocol or POP. We have simple mail transfer protocol or SMTP and we have the Internet Message Access Protocol, or IMAP. These three are used by clients, such as mobile devices or software running on a uh, computer, some sort of standalone application like Thunderbird or Outlook or something like that. There's other protocols as well if you're dealing with Outlook for Exchange, for example, but primarily if you're using a generic application and you're accessing your email server in a generic fashion, you'll be using one of these three protocols. We're going to be focusing on POP and SMTP. POP is used for retrieving mail from a mail server. And SMTP is used for sending mail to a mail server and sending mail between mail servers. If you'd like to learn more about POP and SMTP, take a look at these RFCs. We have RFC 1939 for POP, and we have RFC 2821 for SMTP. In these you'll see there's a number of commands that are transmitted between the client and the server in order to convey what they want to accomplish in the connection. Just like we've seen with HTTP and FTP and some other protocols, there's a, an agreed upon language that is used in order to execute certain things. We're going to take a look at that in a packet capture. Now it's very common in modern use to encrypt your data, especially email nowadays. So POP is often encrypted with SSL or TLS. You also do the same thing with SMTP or IMAP. All these protocols now you can encrypt with SSL or TLS. This is an unencrypted communication so that we can take a look at all the commands that are passed back and forth. What we see here is we have in the beginning a three-way handshake for TCP. POP is transmitted over TCP. And then we have our POP communications, as well as some acknowledgments here, and then the fin closure down at the bottom. There is a filter for POP. Now, of course, you could right click on your protocol here and apply it as a filter, or you can simply enter POP and that will filter your traffic. But if you notice, I've now lost the handshake information. So the handshake at the beginning and the end and some of the acknowledgement packets that were in here in between the data, those are now removed because they weren't part of POP. They were TCP acknowledgements and handshakes and stuff like that. So it might be better if you determine the addresses that are in use or the port that is in use and you end up filtering on that instead of POP as the display filter. So what we have is our three-way handshake. We have our client and server. The client is requesting a connection. The server says, okay, no problem. They then, the client then says, okay, I acknowledge the connection, and we have a three-way handshake. After that, the server then responds and says, okay, we are connected with POP3. The server is ready. You can see that in the info section. If we expand our post office protocol here, we'll have some more information. It says server is ready, so that's good. That's a good message. The client then passes its user. Now you see that since this is unencrypted, the user is in plain text. We pass the user command to the server. The server responds and says, okay, the username is good. Please send me a password. We then send a password. Again, this is unencrypted, so it's in clear text. And you can see it's very easy to determine what's going on. We have literally the commands are named user and pass and OK, and things like that. Server responds and says, OK, mailbox has been opened up. Thank you for your credentials. You have one message that is unread. The client then asks the server for some status. 
The server responds with its status message. We then get a unique ID listing. And then the client asks for a list. This is a list of whatever's in the mailbox. Mailbox scan is completed and it sends us the following data. This is the number of messages and the number of bytes. The client then says, all right, let's retrieve message number one. The server then says, okay, here's the octets that you requested. Here's all the data. And you can see that down below. In the details here, we have not only the number of octets, but we have the actual email itself. Here's the header information. Here's the sent and received information. There's the from, the to, the subject, the date, and then the actual data inside the email itself. And then as we see here, the data then continues. So it's, here's the first packet was basically the header information with the beginning of the data, and then the data continues. And we have data, 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 data. And we acknowledge the packets. We keep retrieving data. Then the client says, delete the message. I've downloaded the email, delete the message. This is an option that is changeable in your client. You can tell it to leave the message on the server, but traditionally it is done so that you download it locally and you would delete it off the server. Nowadays, it, with our web-based email, if you're using Gmail or Yahoo or something like that, we now most often leave everything on the server and have it archived there, but this is a very, very old protocol, and so it was based on local storage. The server responds that it deleted the message, and then we quit the connection and close out. It says, okay, sayonara. Then finally, we close out the TCP connection with the uh, FinAC series. Let's take a look at SMTP. SMTP is used, as I mentioned, to transfer mail between a client and a server in order to send it to a recipient. What we see here is a series of SYNAX of a user creating a TCP connection for SMTP. And then we see the SMTP response from the server. And of course we have SMTP listed in the protocol field here and we could filter on that by simply typing SMTP. And then if we do that, again, just like with POP, we're going to lose some of the information there from TCP, so it might be better to do your filter based on IP and port. But what we see here after the three-way handshake from the server, the 128 address here, is it responds with a 220. A 220 response code is a service ready, meaning everything is good. This is going to look familiar to POP and to HTTP. Many of these protocols that are, especially the ones that are, that are older, they use these different numbered response codes. And so just like with HTTP, 200 series response codes are good. So we see a 220, everything's good to go. And we see in here that we have eSMTP. This is for the enhanced version of SMTP. Just like with POP and FTP, SMTP is a very old protocol and it's been extended and enhanced over the years. And so there's a newer version of SMTP, which is transmitted using new commands with an E in the front. The client then sends an ELO, E-H-L-O. ELO is the enhanced version of HELLO, H-E-L-O, for the traditional original protocol for it to create a connection. The server responds to the hello request and it creates a connection. We then acknowledge that and then the server responds with a listing of what it can do. There's some features that it has. We see that it has pipelining. Pipelining is an option in the server that says that it can accept multiple commands without having to wait for each one. So our client can then send a number of things at once and it doesn't have to wait. Our client then says that it's going to create a mail message. And if you notice here, it says mail from. That's actually, if you remember when we did looked at the pop message, there was a from and a to and a subject and, and the actual body field. Exactly what you saw in the pop request, you see here in the SMTP. So we have the prepended command of mail, but you see from colon and the email address, just like you would when you open it up in your client software after you pull the message. We are literally writing an email with commands right here. The email itself is not uh, like a data package that is just bundled up into a little file and is sent to the server. 
this is old enough that it we are actually crafting the email command by command and line by line in SMTP. So we are saying we're creating a mail and it's from the following person. The server says okay, looks good. Receipt to, so we are sending it to the following person. Server says okay. We then say here's some data. The data being the body of our message. The server responds and says okay and let me know when you're done with the email message by putting in the following commands at the end of your message. And then the client provides a number of packets here of the actual email data that it wants to have in the body. See some additional packets related to that. We have some acknowledgments from the server for some of those data packets. Then a response from the server saying that the message was accepted and it's going to send it to the recipient. We acknowledge that and tell it, OK, I'm done, and we quit the SMTP connection. Then we finish out the TCP connection with some Finax, and we have a, some explicit resets here at the end as well. And that is the termination of our connection. Our next video, we're going to look at 802.11, also known as wireless or Wi-Fi.